Well, good Thursday morning, everybody. It is October 7th already. We are one week into October. Who could believe it? Um, and we are in the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, and we're continuing to work our way through. We have been uh, talked about the man at the pool that Jesus healed and told him to take up his mat and walk and how the authorities were upset that this man was carrying his his uh, mat or his uh, his bedroll on the Sabbath, and they are kind of getting a little freaked out about that, and how um, they then come to Jesus after the man later meets Jesus in the temple and identifies Jesus as the one that healed him, and the authorities apparently confront him. Um, first came Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But so they must have been questioning him because Jesus answered them uh, that his father is still working and so he's still working. And of course, it leaves in verse 18 where we left off yesterday with them saying, uh, or with it saying, For this reason the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him because he was not only breaking the Sabbath but was calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. Um, and of course, it doesn't say that they said this out loud, does it? It's that they. This is more of a thought, it would appear to be more of a thought process, uh, that they're thinking this, that we need to get after this guy, and this is later action. So here's a case of Jesus is going to answer back to them what's going on, what seems to be going on secretly in their side, their minds. Um, so God is seen within their own secret planning and thought. Um, so it is um, another example of Jesus basically reading the mind of those who are uh, persecuting him. So with that, let's look at today uh, verses 19 to 24 uh, in John's Gospel, the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, uh, 19 to 24. And this is entitled, The Authority of the Son. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The, son lo the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, so that you will be astonished. Indeed, just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whoever he wishes. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Anyone who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes who him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Of course, again, <clears throat> there again it's saying that our, that our salvation, our hope, comes through Christ there at the end. Um, but it's interesting. Um, it, very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing. Jesus is doing nothing that, except for what God has sent him in the world to do. He is doing exactly what he was sent to do. Uh, and he will do exactly what he was sent to do, and he will continue to this day doing what he was sent into this world to do. Uh, he, the things that he's doing in this world are, are in some part through our actions, our obedience again. Um, <clears throat> and he points to that there will be greater things. And what has happened already in, in John's Gospel, there's greater things to come. And of course we know that. We know the resurrection is coming for pity's sake. And that is a huge, huge thing. The resurrection, um, the, which comes after the raising of Lazarus. So uh, there are some really incredible things in store for these people that are following Jesus. There are incredible things in store for those of us today that are following Jesus. And we are getting closer and closer to those really incredible things. Um, but we won't labor that um, or belabor that. Uh, the, in 22, the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son. We have a really strange and, and a special relationship with Jesus, because not only is Jesus really there, you know, we call the Holy Spirit our advocate, but Jesus is, you know, when it comes to Judgment Day, Jesus is both our, our advocate, the one that's our attorney, our legal counsel, that is standing up for us to plead for our case, but he's also the one that passes judgment. So if we accept him as our as our advocate, as our pleader, uh, special pleader, uh, that is where we find eternal life. We accept Christ in that role of, of the one that, that, that pleads our case and the one that just to judge us. And of course, if we have a, a good relationship with our attorney, our attorney most certainly would allow us, uh, would, would, would give us some grace. So with that, that is a short and sweet one today. Uh, tomorrow we will continue working our way through the fifth chapter of John's Gospel. Um, but I do ask you to please, please have a special 
day. Have a blessed day. Tell people about this special relationship that we have with Jesus, this fact that he is our not only our, our, our legal counsel, the one that is there to plead our be case on our behalf before, before the judge, who is Jesus. So it's a really special, special thing. And it is a wonderful gift that God has given us. And that is the life and the continued life of Jesus. So have a blessed day. And please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy the day. Bye-bye.